Medfield and Medway. Close in name and only a town apart, but Medfield traces its creation to another nearby town. We're the 43rd town, it was then Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, we were the first town of the 12 to break away from Dedham. Richard DeSorger is town historian and a longtime history teacher at Medfield's middle and high schools. He also grew up here. I don't think I could have been as good a teacher as I was if I was in another town because I was able to use the history of the town, the knowledge that I had. When we studied the King Philip War, I actually used to take the kids out on bikes all around town. One place those students would see is the Dwight Derby House. The home dates back to the 1650s. Jeffrey Sauter helps care for the property. I'm related distantly to 17 of the people who have lived in this house or managed it. When I take people through, I say this house is like a time capsule that never got buried. Among that history, the home's first owner, Timothy Dwight, was shot in the doorway to the house during King Philip's War. Two centuries later, resident Mary Townsend used one room in the home to run a business. Out of necessity to support herself, she started a woman's clothing business in this room in about 1830. Industry also had a hand in putting Medfield on the map. The hat factory, which became the second largest straw and felt hat factory in the country. Only the one in Foxborough was larger. Eventually, it employed more than 1,200 people, which was larger than the population of the town itself. The only other thing that would top that employment would be up to the state hospital. The hospital opened in 1896. At the time, it was considered innovative for its treatment of those with mental health needs. As a kid, you would just accept the hospital. We had our Little League games and practices up there, and we would have to stop because the residents would wander across the field. On the former Medfield State Hospital campus, a new future is taking shape. People felt very strongly about trying to save this building in particular. Ultimately, the goal would be to save the whole campus. Jean Minio is part of that effort as executive director of the Bell Forge Arts Center. Her organization is working to transform the hospital's chapel into a performing arts and education center. The building we're in today was built originally as the chapel, but it's also been used as a gymnasium. It's been used for dances on Friday nights. It's always had a community aspect to it. We feel a responsibility to kind of keep that community access available. This project is part of a larger one to bring new life to the entire campus. Medfield State Hospital closed in 2003, and the town bought the property in 2014. A developer has been selected to do historic preservation work on about two dozen buildings and create more than 300 rental apartments. Bell Forge is already hosting concerts and festivals outdoors while fundraising for the chapel renovation. The response has been amazing and for us it really feels like proof of concept. The idea is to be a regional art center feels like that's coming to fruition but it will take time. Also in the works, a second building for classrooms and rehearsal space. Director of Programming Paul Armstrong says these new resources will make life easier for creators. From an independent artist's point of view, finding a venue, finding a studio space, finding a rehearsal space, it's three tasks. By being under one roof, that barrier to entry into all of those spaces obviously is a lot easier. And when we explain the overall goal and the facilities and that journey that I talk about that we're going to be able to give artists, their eyes go wide, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's super cool. The goal here, to grow a lasting relationship between artists and the Medfield community. It allows people to create. This is their canvas. There's so many good local talents and great artists in and around the city to have a space for them. It's amazing. Hmm, and 
Now, apparently, Medfield's name also sets itself apart. It mm. is the only town of Medfield in the world, says mm -hmm. historian Richard DeSorger. There's Medfield streets and Medfield neighborhoods, but no town. No town named Medfield. But you might see Medfield College mm. in some Disney movies, including <laughs> Flubber, and Absent-Minded Professor. That's because Walt Disney had a personal friend who lived in Medfield, and Disney so used cool. to visit him here, right here in Massachusetts. I love that. Still ahead, a community staple.